Hey there, welcome back to another video, this time of the 69 worst science fiction movies of all time according to critics. This is another screen recorder video, I haven't done with these in a while, uh, so that'll be a fun uh, thing to do, change things up a little bit, uh, get my passion built back up for, uh, for uh, content on this channel, spice things up. Uh, this will not be the last of these type of videos I will be doing because I want to do more. I want to do ones for stuff like uh, other lists for worst films or best films or films that didn't get made or, or casting choices that weren't made. So um, yeah, uh, so without further ado, let's actually get started. So first off, you know you're in for a bad list when the first image you see is of Nicolas Cage... And, you know, that that's already bad in itself. When you're looking at a list of bad movies and Nicolas Cage is on there, you're like, oh, great. You know, Nicolas Cage is probably going to be on there like 50 times. But other than Nicolas Cage, when you realize it's left behind, I guess John Lynch left his brain behind when he put this list together because Left Behind is in no way, shape, or form a science fiction movie. Left Behind is not a science fiction film! What is science fiction about Left Behind? It's a fiction film. It's based on Christian fiction. The Rapture is not sci-fi. There's nothing sci-fi about it. It's a fucking fantasy. That's what it is. It's a work of fiction. There's no fucking sci-fi elements. It doesn't take place in the future. It doesn't take place in 2029. It's a fucking fiction film. So, number 69... On the list is Hot Tub Time Machine 2. This movie is egregiously awful. It is one of the worst sequels I can think of in recent memory. If I were to make a list like this, it would be way higher. 69 is way too low for this piece of shit. I don't know why this got a 3.5 out of 10, let alone a 29 out of 100. This film is a disgrace to the first movie. And it's just a absolutely horrid piece of shit. That being said... If I were to make a list of worst science fiction films, I probably put, would not put this on here, despite how bad it is, because it's more of a bad comedy to me. It's more of a bad sequel. It's not really one of the worst science fiction films ever, because the science fiction elements are there, but there really isn't a lot of effort put into them, so I guess maybe that's why they put it on the worst list. But, I don't know, it just seems like there's other films that should be on a list like this that... This would take the place of, and I just don't feel that would be right because it's not, it's more of a comedy. It's not trying to be a science fiction film. It's a comedy first, science fiction film second. Number 68 is AVP Requiem. I don't think it's that awful. I've seen worse. It's got some decent gore. I wouldn't put it on my list. I would definitely put something like AVP on here or Alien 3 or... Prometheus or Alien Covenant, but I wouldn't put Requiem up there because I, I don't say I've seen worse in the franchise. I'd even put Predators above Requiem, if I'm gonna be honest. But even then, I don't know. Like I one of these days I'd like to do a list like this myself. Because I know shit like Star Crystal isn't on here. And that's a fucking shame. Uh because that film deserves to be on lists of worst list of worst films ever. Of, of a genre because it really is I mean Star Crystal is worse than all of these it's worse than Hot Tub Time Machine 2 it's worse than AVP R it's worse than Alien vs. Predator aka Assholes vs. Penises which is, and which is number 67 Alien vs. Predator number 66 is Bright I don't get why this film gets the shaft so much it's not that bad I think a lot of critics uh, were honestly kind of paid by studios to give really negative reviews. If you look at some of these reviews with some of these critics, they seem kind of fishy. Um, Netflix was, is competition to studios and their output. I would not put it past these studios to try to give some critics a little extra incentive to slam this film as hard as they can to get people not to go see it on Netflix. But it didn't matter because it was a huge hit. And despite... The fact that I think it's underrated and I like the film quite a bit. It still doesn't belong on this list. Not because of the fact that I think it's better than the critics say it is. Because the fact it's not a science fiction movie. 
it takes place in an alternate universe where humans coincide and live with orcs and other magical creatures. It doesn't take place in a futuristic landscape where they're, fl- they're driving around fucking flying cars and shit. It's not Blade Runner meets Alien Nation. That's not what it is. It's more of a fantasy film. It's an action fantasy film. It's not, there's not, there's barely any sci-fi elements in it. So that's why I wouldn't put it on a list of worst sci-fi films. Because it's not really a science fiction movie. Number 65, The Postman. Film so boring and bad that it should be returned to sender permanently. Uh, I have no issue at all with this place on this list. It deserves to be there. Number 64, Howard the Duck. This is another film that gets an unfair rap. This film is routinely on worst ever lists. And I'm sorry. This film has more heart, more compassion, more care, more fun than it's given credit for. I will defend Howard the Duck. Because I not only do I genuinely, unapologetically like the movie, I don't think it's one of the worst ever. It, it, I just don't understand why it's always on these lists. The 50 worst films ever. Or was like 100 worst films ever. Howard the Duck. Yes, it was a bomb. Yes, it didn't do well in theaters. But if you read the comics, they're weird. They're silly. They're goofy. They're campy. There's a villain named Dr. Bong who has a fucking bell for a head. Okay? The movie being goofy, silly, and campy, I don't think that's a problem. Because that's what the source material is. I don't think the duck suit looks like shit. It's actually really impressive for the time. Uh, I thought David Gale did a wonderful job playing Howard in the scenes that he did. I thought, I thought, uh, oh, I was it David Gale or was it Chip, Chip, uh, Chip Zion, Chip Zion voiced, voiced Howard. Uh, I thought the voice of, you know, the voice actor who did Howard, I think he did a great job. Leia Thompson is hot and sexy. It's got a cool soundtrack. Uh, the score by John Barry is very underrated. The visual effects by ILM get a lot of shit by people, but for the time, they're really impressive. I, 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 Tim Robbins is fun as, as, uh, Philzy. I, I've, I've always liked the film. I liked it when I saw it when I was a kid and I still enjoy the movie. It's, it's, even if you don't like the movie, you have to admit it's unquestionably unique. There's only one Howard the Duck, uh, for better or for worse. And when it comes to other movies that are on this list, at least Howard the Duck isn't forgettable. Howard the Duck isn't the type of film you watch and you're like, wow, that was a total waste of my time. I know there's a lot of people who watch it and they're like, they didn't like it, but at least they can appreciate some elements of it. That's the thing. That's why I wouldn't put it on a list of worst films ever, because there are elements to it that can, that are genuinely good, that I think are, uh, of quality. And, uh, it's not a total fucking shit show, but that's just my personal opinion. Uh, number 63, the colony, never seen it. I know a friend of mine saw it, said it was boring. So, uh, but other than that, I can't say much about it. Number 62 timeline, another film I haven't seen. Batman and Robin is number 61. Why is Batman and Robin on this list? Yes, Batman and Robin is bad. It is one of the worst comic book films ever. But it's not one of the worst science fiction films ever because it's not a science fiction movie. Batman and Robin is not a science fiction film. This is the first time I've ever seen Batman and Robin and science fiction film in the same sentence. Or in the same connotation. What 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 is science fiction about this movie? Mr. Freeze? His technology? Batman's gadgets? The Batmobile? This is not a science fiction film. This is a comic book movie. This is what I'm talking about about this list. You have shit like Batman and Robin on here. Not even a comic book film. I mean, I mean, it's comic book. It's so fucking bad. It's fucking up my brain cells. It's sending them into reverse. I'm thinking backwards now. Keep this up. I'll turn into fucking Bizarro Mike. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, Batman and Robin. Not a, not a. Not a science fiction movie. Belongs nowhere on this list. Number 60, Highlander, The Final Dimension. Another film that's not a sci-fi. How is this? This is more a fantasy film. I thought this was a fantasy action adventure franchise. The sci-fi elements are very 
very few, very thin. And besides, it's not even one of the worst sequels in the series. Where the fuck is something like The Source? Or Endgame? Endgame probably is on this list somewhere. I would not be surprised. But then where is The Source? The Source is worse than all of them. And if you're going to worst sci-fi movies, if you want to go with critics, a lot of people hated High Murder 2. And that actually can be considered a sci-fi film. It's the most sci-fi film out of all of the High Murder sequels. But anyway, yeah, I don't, I don't know why Final Dimension is on here, but whatever. Number 59, The Divide. Haven't seen the movie, so can't say anything. Number 58, Pandorum. I need to see this movie. It's got Dennis Quaid. It's kind of a loose, uh, somewhat kind of sequel to Event Horizon, but not really. It's just inspired by Event Horizon. My friend saw it, liked it, thought it was a gem. A lot of critics hated it, hated it apparently, but it's got Dennis Quaid and... It's similar to Event Horizon. I'm still, I still can't believe I haven't gotten around to watching it yet. But um, because I haven't seen it, I can't really say whether or not it should be on here. So that's number 58. For those of you who've seen it, you can debate uh, in the comments down below if you'd like. Number 57, Atlas Shrugged. Never seen Atlas Shrugged. Don't know what to say. Number 56, Hangar 10. Another film I haven't seen. Pixels is number 55. What is this really a science fiction movie? If Pixels is a science fiction film, then Ghostbusters 1984 is a science fiction film. And that means it's not a science fiction movie. Because Ghostbusters is not considered a science fiction film. It's considered a comedy. A horror comedy. Pixels, you could call it a horror film because it's so fucking horrible. It's horrifying. But... There's very few sci-fi aspects to this. There's the aliens who are using old arcade game characters to attack us. That's it. Oh, and there's some guns that the heroes are using that, that can break them apart. But that that's all it is. It's, that's the only sci-fi elements you have in Pixels. I wouldn't put it on a list of worst sci-fi movies because that's a disgrace to science fiction. This, this isn't a science fiction movie. It's just a piece of shit. Stranded. Haven't seen it. Can't say much about it. Transformers of the Last Night. I, I still haven't seen this. The running time turned me off. I didn't want to watch it. I haven't seen Age of Extinction either because the running time is too long. So, yeah. I, I can't really say anything about it. Flatliners remake. Is that really a sci-fi movie? I guess there's more sci-fi elements to this remake than the original, but the, ori the original I don't consider to be a sci-fi movie. I consider that to be a horror film. So I, I wouldn't really put this in the sci-fi genre, even if I had seen it and it was awful and it was bad, and I know it will be whenever I get around to watching it because I'm a huge fan of the original. And I remember hearing this is going to be a sequel, but then, of course, no, it's just a fucking lazy fucking remake. But anyway, yeah, um, just kind of a very loose sci-fi, I guess. I don't know, I just wouldn't put it there, to be honest. Number 51, Gamer. I don't think it's that bad. I mean, I'm not debating its, its place as a sci-fi movie. I'm debating its place as one of the worst ever. I thought it was an okay film. Number 50, Pulse. Is that really a sci-fi film? I always see that in the horror genre. I don't see that as, as a sci-fi film. But, alright. Number 49, The Anomaly. Never seen it. Don't know what to say. Fantastic Four is number 48. The 2015 film. Of course it is. This is another film that I don't think is as bad as its reputation suggests. I'm not going to come in and defend the movie voraciously. I'm not going to be the guy to be like, it's good. It's not. It's not a good movie. Initially, I thought it was okay, but after watching it again, it doesn't hold up as well. The third act really blows. It doesn't match the rest of the movie. There are tonal shifts that that are very jarring, and at times it can be kind of dull. But I thought the body horror elements introduced to the franchise and to the characters of the Fantastic Four I thought was inspired. It was interesting. It was, a, it was an interesting route to take things. I didn't think the actors did a bad job playing the FF. 
I, I, I didn't think they were as bored or as tired as a lot of other critics said they were. Josh Trank, I, uh, I mean, what happened on the set of this film may or may not be true, uh, but regardless, Josh Trank, I think, deserves a little bit of sympathy from people, despite his antics, because of the fact that he was hired by Fox based on his vision for the film. And Fox basically told him to fuck off, we don't like what you're doing, and didn't even let him finish the movie he wanted to make. So, Fox deserves some fucking blame, Fox deserves some fucking shit, not all of it should be lumped and thrown onto Josh Trank. The third act is Fox's fault. The fucking wigs and shit, all that other shit, the obvious reshoots, Fox's fault. That's not Josh Trank's fault. And... When it comes to the film itself, I've seen much worse superhero films. This is considered the worst ever. I think it's recency bias. I think it is. H have you heard of Captain America, the 1978 film, TV movie? Have you seen shit like the Doctor Strange TV movie? Uh, do you remember crap like uh, Barb Wire? Do you remember Steel with Shaquille O'Neal? Those are all comic book films that are much worse than Fantastic Four 2015. What about Superman 4? You know, as bad as Fantastic Four was, I'd rather watch that because at least it showed some creativity. At least it showed some interesting things. At least it was trying to do something different. And for all the shit it gets for not being like the source material, Christopher Nolan did the exact same shit with his Batman movies and got nothing but praise. But Josh Trank tries to do something different and add some body horror and realism to the Fantastic Four, which is something that's been sorely missing, if you ask me. Oh, he's 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 an asshole. Oh, he fucked up. It's not like the comics, so therefore it sucks. That's my problem. The fucking hypocriticism, fucking hypocritical bullshit by a lot of critics when it comes to looking at movies like, like Fantastic Four 20, 2015, like Fan Four Stick. It's like, oh, that's fucking piece of shit because it's not like the comic... Christopher Nolan's films aren't like the comic that much either. But they're good. Whether they're good or not is always is subjective. Just like the same thing with whether or not this film is bad. Or Green Lantern. I'm surprised that's not on this list. Considering that you have Fantastic Four on here. Honestly, I liked this more than Rise of the Silver Surfer. Number 47, Babylon AD. Yeah, that film is an absolute butt fuck. Really disappointing. I mean, yeah, I, that, that film definitely deserves a place on this list. Number 46, Time Changer, some Cristiano Brothers Christian film, I think. Never seen it. Don't, don't care to see it. Zoom. It's bad, but it's forgettable bad. It's the type of bad that's just forgettable and inoffensive. I, I wouldn't put it on my list. Number 44, The Mating Habits of the Earthbound Human. Never seen it. Don't care to see it. The Objective. I have an objective of not watching that anytime soon. Number 42 is Atlas Shrug 2. Don't care. Number 41, Alien Outpost. Ne never seen it. Number 40, uh, I mean, number 42. What the fuck? They fucked up. Wow. Not only is this list bad, but it's a total fuck up. You got two number 41s. Did you not fucking uh, read through this? You got 41, Alien Outpost. And you got 41, Officer Down. So is there 70 worst films now? Or is it still 69? You just fucked up. Officer Down. Look like it might be a fun movie. Haven't gotten around to seeing it yet, though. Skyline. I saw it once a while back. I thought it was okay. I don't think it's one of the worst ever. Number 38, Diabolical, never seen that. The one, I don't think it's that bad. I thought it was okay, it was decent, it has some nice bits of martial arts in it. I, I don't think it's one of the worst sci-fi movies ever. It's not Feeders bad, it's not Dark Universe bad. Jason X at number 36. I'm not a big fan of the film, but I wouldn't put it on a worst sci-fi films ever list. And honestly... It's more of a horror film. It's a horror franchise. I'm not going to put a horror franchise that's known for being a horror franchise. I'm not going to put an installment or horror franchise in a sci-fi film list. I just don't think that's appropriate. 
That's just me personally. I know you have shit like Alien and Predator, but Alien is more of a horror film. It's got science fiction elements, but it's horror first, sci-fi second, really. Um, at least to me personally. With Jason X, I don't like it, but it at least has some decent kills. And it's the best slasher icon and space movie out there. I mean, if you're gonna put if you're gonna stretch the rules and put a film like this on a list like this, why isn't shit like Bloodline or fucking Leprechaun 4 on there? Number 35, Apollo 18, yeah, pretty fucking shitty. I mean it's the movie with a killer moon rock. Evil Moon Rocks from the director of the upcoming Backdraft sequel. Yeah, the guy who directed this shit, where the twist is that the that the Moon Rocks are are bad. The Moon Rocks are evil. He's directing the Backdraft sequel, which has no business to exist. I don't. I, that's a whole other story. Number thirty four, Sound of Thunder. This film gets a bad rap, and does not get a fair shake. This film was not finished. Was not able to be finished properly. This film was financed by a studio that went bankrupt. Then another studio got a hold of the footage and gave uh, a few extra bucks here and there to try to finish it. And what came out is an unfinished product. It's very hard to really say this film was one of the worst ever or a total worthless piece of shit because it wasn't even given a fair opportunity to be the film it wanted to be in the first place. When you look at elements of this movie, they're not that bad. They're not worst ever. The acting, the direction, uh, the concept. Yes, there's been stuff like this has been done before. The thing is, though, the short story this is based on was written long before a lot of the films and a lot of the other stories that critics have been saying it ripped off from or it's derivative of. Because the short story came first. It's not the film's fault that the film adaptation of the short story didn't happen until so many years later. It's like John Carter. You know, John Carter is derivative of all these different number of things because so many other stories and so many other films are derivative of John Carter and, and the novels. So it, it's one of those things that's like, it's hard to really say, oh, this sucks because it's derivative. This sucks because it's cliched. It sucks because the effects suck. The effects didn't have, didn't, weren't finished. So yeah, I, I definitely don't agree with, with this being on a list like this because it's not fair to the film. The film... It, it wasn't given a fair opportunity or the ability to complete itself fully. So it's not fair to, to call it shit because it wasn't able to complete itself. I mean, that's just my personal opinion on it. Number 33, Maximum Overdrive. Why? Why does this film get the fucking dick up the ass? I don't understand it. I will never get it. Uh, if it, why is this on a science fiction film list too? This is barely a sci-fi film. The only sci-fi element is there's a comet and it's causing uh, appliances and cars and shit to come to life and attack people. That's it. There's no, that's other than that. There's no other science fiction elements. It doesn't take place in the future. It, there's no fucking futuristic elements. It, it's not a sci-fi film. It's a horror film. And it's a fucking blast. It's entertaining. It's got some great stunt work. It's got a soundtrack by AC fucking DC. You got Emilio Estevez. You got a good cast. I don't understand the crap this film gets. I will never get it. Oh, it's it's campy. It's stupid. Uh, it's laughable. You can't take it seriously. It was never supposed to be taken seriously. Maximum Overdrive was never meant to be taken seriously. It has its tongue planted firmly in its left cheek from the fucking opening credits. This film is not trying to be a serious film. You want to see a version of this story by Stephen King that really sucks? Watch Trucks by Timothy, B you know, Trucks featuring Timothy Busfield. Okay, watch that shit. Like, that's boring. That's insufferably boring. This is at least entertaining. And no, not an ironic, oh, so bad, it's good way. No, it's legitimately entertaining. So no, I don't agree with Maximum Overdrive being on this list at all. It's a really fun movie, and if anything, it's underrated, and it doesn't belong on a sci-fi list anyway, because it's not a science fiction film.
Number 32, Universal, the Re Universal Soldier, The Return. Forgive me for flubbing my words there. It's, I mean, fuck. I mean, as further down, further I go down this list, the more and more bullshit pops up. This is another film that I don't get the hate. Van Damme's actually having fun in this. He's smiling. He's not a sad sack. He's not crying at fucking monkeys on the animal planet. He's not trying to be Colonel Kurtz. This is the last Universal Soldier film where Luke Devereux was actually Luke Devereux. The other films, Regeneration and Day of Reckoning, they, they fucking ass-fucked the character. They turned him inside out. They took away all of his emotion in, the, in Regeneration, and then in the in Day of Reckoning, they turned him into a fucking bad guy. So, why is this the worst one? Why is this the worst Universal Soldier film? I love Boston Globe as, like, devoid of personality, and it has an annoying, gratuitous, sentimental streak. Devoid of personality? John Clint Van Damme has personality for spades in, in The Return. I don't get that criticism at all. But hey, it's just me. Number 31, Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. It is a stupendously shitty superhero film. But it's not a science fiction film. There, what, what, What's science fiction about it? Nuclear Man? Other than that, it's a comic book film. It's a comic book movie. It's not a science fiction film. I wouldn't put it on this list. Because it's not, I wouldn't even, quali I, don't, I don't even think Superman 4 qualifies as a science fiction movie. Number 30, Hollow Man. Another film that just really, if you ask me, is misunderstood and underappreciated. Hollow Man, I thought was a thrilling, exciting, inventive, well-directed film with a very intense memorable performance by Kevin Bacon and a really intriguing take on the invisible man in a way that wasn't just a straight up rehash or unimaginative Xerox copy of the story. It was its own film. And I don't think the film gets enough credit for things like it's very revolutionary and impressive effects. It's uh, intensity uh, and the fact that it's Verhoeven's last truly great film. So no, I don't think it's that bad. At all. I don't think it deserves to be on this list at all. Number 29, Spark, A Space Tale. Why are we including fucking animated movies? That's in its own category. Number 28, Max Steel. I've never seen it. I know about Max Steel because I used to have a Max Steel figure when I was a kid. And I used to watch the CGI animated a abomination show uh so this is a completely different version of max steel than what i grew up with but from what i'm seeing in the screenshot it looks pretty shitty number 27 congo why i don't also why is this a science fiction film this is what this is not a science fiction movie the most science fiction this film gets is they have lasers and there's a satellite that they communicate with other than that, it's an action-adventure film. It's not a science fiction film, so I wouldn't put it on this list, period. Because it doesn't qualify as a sci-fi movie. Well, I guess you have the stuff with Amy and the talking ape. So I guess I guess you could... But that's just very... Those are just little elements. Overall, like, it's spirit. It's the crux of the film is action-adventure. Now, I know uh, the Austin Chronicle says it's jaw-droppingly bad. This adaptation of Michael Crichton's 1980 novel about a talking ape named Amy in a fabled lost city deep in the jungles of Central Africa is as sophisticated in execution as a Jungle Gym movie. Why does everything have to be sophisticated or thought-provoking or uh, say something about society to a lot of these critics why can't a film like Congo just be viewed as the film it's trying to be, which which is a popcorn action adventure movie? Congo is not trying to be sophisticated. Congo is not trying to be thought provoking. When you have a movie where you have Tim Curry going, "Stop eating my sesame cake," the the you know not Tim Curry, where you have this guy telling Tom Curry, Tim Curry to stop eating his sesame cake, which is Del Orlando, which. 
What is this? This fucking list just fucks with my brain cells. It's making me shit them out my ass. It's just like, ah, so much bullshit. Just filling my head with bullshit. Make me fuck shit up. But when you have a, a movie where you have, stop eating my system and cake. I don't think it's trying to take itself seriously. Or, or an ape, talking ape that's drinking a fucking martini. I don't think it's taking itself seriously, okay? And then that's not that's not something that is is that bad, okay? I mean, why can't you just look at it? Oh, it's an action adventure movie. It's a throwback to some of these old action adventure movies from the past. That's really what it is. It's not trying to be anything that it's not. So don't give it shit for being something that it's not try for not being something that it's not even trying to be in the first place. I'm so tired of critics doing that. It's not trying to be sophisticated or thought-provoking or deep it's just a popcorn movie and i personally feel it's one of the better films of that genre especially in the 90s of action adventure films yeah i'll defend congo because it's a fun movie it's nowhere near that awful and i don't think it deserves to be on a list of worst sci-fi films that's for sure number 26 left behind again Left Behind is not a science fiction film. There's nothing science fiction about these Left Behind films. They're fantasy. They're fiction. That's it. There's nothing sci-fi about it. Period. End of discussion. Geostorm. Haven't seen it yet, so I can't see it. I can't say much. I can't really say anything. Number 24, Highlander Endgame. Pretty fucking awful. I, I love uh, the San Francisco Chronicles uh, review here. It says numbing. That's a perfect way to describe it, really. But I, I don't know why the source isn't on here because it's worse than all of the Highlander sequels. Number 23, Wing Commander, Space Will Never Be the Same. I don't think they ever called it Space Will Never Be the Same. They just called it Wing Commander. And yeah, it's bad, but I don't remember. I, I haven't seen it in so long, and I don't know. I don't know what to say. Maybe it is as as bad as uh, top 30 worst sci-fi films ever. I don't know. Branded, another film I've never seen. Virus. I wouldn't put it on this list because look at it. Just for effects like that. It's bad. It's disappointing. It's below average. It's not one of the worst ever. Because there are enough elements in it that make it worth a watch. That alone is like not worthy of being on the worst ever list for me lovers never seen it species two yeah i mean i'm not yeah it's 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 pretty fucking awful it's a pretty shitty sequel number 18 supernova it's got all the the making of the backstory behind this movie is more interesting than the film itself but the film itself also isn't a total piece of shit it's not good it's not great. It's one of those below average movies that has a lot of missed potential. But there there are things about it that I thought were decent and were worth watching. So I wouldn't put it on a list of worst sci-fi films. Ultraviolet. I like the look of the film, but it's been so long since I've seen it and I can't really say anything. I can't debate anything about it. Including its place on this list. Darkest Hour looked pretty shitty. Vice, another directed video piece of shit where Bruce Willis doesn't give a shit. Number 14, Street Fighter, The Legend of Chun Li, or as I like to call it, The Legend of Kum Li. Another film that just blows my mind that it's even on a list like this. This is not a science fiction movie. There's nothing science fiction about Street Fighter, Legend of Kum Li, okay? It's a video game movie. With martial arts. It's a martial arts video game movie. It's not a science fiction film. Okay? It, it isn't. It, does it take place in the future? Are, are there fucking laser rifles? Are there uh, robots and shit? No. And on a list like this, where the fuck is shit like Terminator Genesis? Like, that's worse than so a lot of these other films that have been on this list so far. Or Robocock. But, you know... We'll put shit on here that isn't even fucking sci-fi. Like Street Fighter The Legend of Chun-Li. Number 13, Andron. Haven't seen it. Sounds pretty bad. Number 12, Piranha Part 2. 
I wouldn't really call it a sci-fi movie. There's flying piranhas. I guess they were some kind of genetic experimentation or something, but it's more of a horror film. It's not very good. It's got really annoying characters. It's boring. It's slow paced. James Cameron did not actually direct the movie. He directed a few scenes uh, and that's it. The rest were directed, I think, by a video Gio Santos. Uh, it's a waste of a cool premise of flying piranha and it's a waste of Lance Henriksen, but it's not really what I would consider a sci-fi move. So it wouldn't be on my list. Number 11 left behind again, not a science fiction film. Lynch, you should have left behind the left behind titles on here. Why are they on here? Did your boss say you must put left behind films on this list? Because other than that, it makes no fucking sense. Because they're not science fiction movies. They're not. Number 10, the Emoji Movie. Another film is not science fiction. This is a animated kids movie. Okay? If this is a science fiction film, then so is Inside Out. Nobody says it's Inside Out is a science fiction movie. It's a, it's an animated kids film with fantasy elements. It doesn't take place in real life. At least not the majority of it. It takes place for the majority of the running time inside a phone. Okay? It's not science fiction. This just seems lazy at this point. It's like, oh, look at one of the most worst one of the worst films in recent memory in terms of critic uh, in terms of critics. Let's throw that out here. On a list of worst science fiction movies. Because it's one of the worst. But it's not really a science fiction film. Number nine, The Adventures of Pluto Nash. This one, I am totally okay with it being on the list. Would be on mine. Yes, Hot Tub Time Machine 2 also has science fiction elements and is a comedy. But to me, Pluto Nash is even more of a sci-fi film. Pluto Nash is clearly trying to be more of a sci-fi film than shit like Hot Tub Time Machine 2 in terms of the plot, in terms of all the other aspects of it, it's a really lame sci-fi movie, and it's a really bad comedy that isn't funny, and it's easily one of uh, Eddie Murphy's worst, and was the biggest bomb of his career, so yeah, uh, it definitely would put that on the list. Number eight, though, Mortal Kombat Annihilation? Yes, I would love to annihilate every single copy of this flaming pile of shit, but, this is not a science fiction film. There is nothing science fiction about Mortal Kombat Annihilation. There's nothing science fiction about it. It's a martial arts video game fantasy film. That's what Mortal Kombat Annihilation is. One of the worst of that particular genre, or those genres. But it's not one of the worst science fiction films, because there's nothing science fiction about it. Did somebody just watch this? Or, or maybe they didn't even watch it. Maybe they just looked at bad reviews, looked at the low critic scores, and were like, fuck, man, we can't find 69 bad science fiction movies that people know enough about or are somewhat well-known or ones that we've personally seen. So, just throw shit out there that isn't even sci-fi and hope people don't notice. I noticed. I'm not alone. And everyone who's watching this video notices. Notices. So, no, your fuck-up is not going to be forgotten about. Number seven, Zapped. I thought it was inoffensively meh when I saw it on TV years ago. Wouldn't be on my worst list. Future World. This just came out recently. I thought it looked all right. James Franco uh, playing a bad guy. I'm curious about it. I doubt it's as bad as the sixth worst science fiction film ever. And is it really a science fiction film? Because from what I've been seeing, it seems like it's more of a post-apocalyptic Mad Max movie. Mad Max type of film. But Mad Max, I guess, can be considered a little bit of a sci-fi. But then again, I think post-apocalyptic is its own genre. So, I don't know. Saturn 3, it's bad, but I don't. I wouldn't put it that high. It's got good production values. It's, it's not good, but, I mean, for the time, the effects were somewhat impressive. There's some interesting ideas that were mentioned and talked about in the film, but I don't think it's top five bad, especially in comparison to shit like Star Crystal. Number four, Battlefield Earth. That's a no-brainer. 
Number three, Atlas Shrug 3. Number two, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. First off, wrong photo. That is not from Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. That's from one of the sequels. Second, it's not a science fiction film. There's nothing... It's just a, it's a horror comedy. It's a horrible horror comedy, but it's not a science fiction movie. What... what some of the sequels are more sci-fi than the first movie. And number one is Baby Geniuses. I mean, the film is a putrid pile of baby puke and piss and shit. And Kathleen Turner and Christopher Lloyd stoop to a new low and roll around in it. So, I mean, I can definitely see it being on a worst of list. Is it my personal worst? Well, I mean, the sci-fi elements are are pretty weak. Oh, babies can talk. That's really what the sci-fi elements are. I mean, this is, I just, I don't know. I, the sci-fi elements are so weak in this that I almost wouldn't want it to put it on a list like this. I know there's there are some sci-fi elements to it, but it just seems very weak to me. Comparison to stuff like Star Crystal, Dark Universe, uh, Terminator Genesis, Robocock, the Total Recall remake, you know, stuff like that, which are legitimate, straightforward, true and true sci fi. This is more of a family film trying to cash in on Rugrats. But it be on a list of the worst, I'm not going to debate because it deserves to be on a list like this. But. As the worst ever sci-fi film, I don't know because it just, it's not sci-fi enough to me. But anyway, I do not know what else to say, folks, except uh, thanks for watching this video. Thanks for listening to me ramble on and rant on a list of 69 worst science fiction movies of all time, according to critics on Metacritic. And feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below, if you haven't already, about what films you'd put on your personal worst. And, um, as always, uh, thanks for watching and I will see you later. See ya.